Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 65 of Lab Padres, SpaceX, and Starbase Weekly Updates. We've got a ton of info for you today, so let's dig in. Kicking off this week's Starbase update, Star Factory expansion is progressing as crews began dismantling the ground fabrication building, also known as the pizza oven. It previously served as a construction shed for various ground system components. Moving on to Mega Bay on Friday afternoon, Booster 10 was lifted up and onto its transport stand in preparation for a rollout. Interestingly, both Mega Bay overhead cranes were used in a lift for the very first time. Not even 16 hours later, Booster 10 left its birthplace and was transported over to the famous Rocket Garden via Highway 4. Rather than being scrapped, it will be patiently waiting for its round of cryo testing at Massey's, but more on that later. Assembly of SpaceX's new LR11000 crawler crane has wrapped up as its boom took a stretch on Sunday morning, just in front of the under construction mega bay. As the day progressed, the expansion of Star Factory took a dramatic turn. The oldest of all bays windbreak disappeared in a matter of minutes. The building was cut in half and tipped over, ending its four year long service. Wasting no time, removal of steel rubble of the demolished windbreak commenced the next day. Over at the launch site, a continuous flight auger continued drilling another set of piles near the orbital launch mount as the repairs persist. A rebar cage was quickly lowered into the hole for strengthening. Tuesday morning, a communication bunker near the methane tanks at the orbital tank farm was relocated. In the background, the aforementioned auger worked hard on the foundations for the new tanks. As the day unfolded, the first section of Booster 12, another super heavy prototype, made its way from the ring yard to the so-called staging pad in front of Mega Bay in preparation for stacking. This four rings tall barrel is a part of the booster's liquid oxygen tank. Thursday night began with another part of Booster 12, the Common Dome section, making its way from production tents to Mega Bay. Both barrels are yet to move into the bay as Booster 11 still occupies one of the turntables. The very same day, the first cryogenic deliveries of nitrogen and oxygen were made to the orbital tank farm since the integrated flight test of Starship on the 20th of April. It appears the damage to the vertical tanks isn't preventing SpaceX from using existing infrastructure for at least the coming months. As captured by Rovercam, a new turntable arrived at Starbase likely for the second mega bay. Turntables are used in the process of stacking to slowly rotate tanks as robotic welders join two sections together. My good friend Mauricio with RGV Aerial Photography took to the Texas skies again on the 26th, allowing us to share a few new overhead shots of Starbase with you. Starting at the Massey's test site, we can see that progress is being made in preparation for the new booster cryostation with concrete now poured on the top pilings as we saw previously. Over by the tank farm, rebar was being placed for the southern cryo tank pedestals on the new slab last week, while crews are preparing the foundation for similar pedestals just to the north. Moving down Highway 4 to the build site, steady progress can be seen on the new current phase of construction, including demolition work on the propulsion and ground fabrication buildings. This flyover also gave us one last aerial view of Low Bay prior to its demolition later in the week. Over at the first stage of the Star Factory expansion, no new foundations are visible yet, but the second section of the floor slab has now been poured. Next to the presumed press pit, the installation of underground conduit continues working towards the northern end of the site. At the new Mega Bay build, the LR1300 was busy installing the Z-Girts that will support the cladding panels. Just outside the foundations, the recently arrived LR11000 from Roberts Road was still being assembled in preparation for its upcoming work lifting the prefabricated corner sections for installation. Down Highway 4 at the launch site, crews continued to work hard installing new piles not only in and around the launch mount, but also next to the four horizontal tanks that will supply the water for the new water-cooled steel base under the mount. This week at Port Canaveral, Falcon 9 Booster 1076 was laid horizontally for refurbishment at Roberts Road in anticipation for its next flight. 
In the early morning hours of May 27th, Arabsat Badr-8 mission blasted off from Space Launch Complex 40, putting a single Airbus-built satellite into geostationary transfer orbit. After three days of sailing back home, the drone ship just read the instructions with Booster 1062 arrived at Port Canaveral following the Arabsat mission. Later that day, B-1062 was lifted off the drone ship onto the dock in preps for laydown and transport to Hangar X for refurbishment. In no time, Crosby Skipper towed Just Read the Instructions back to the ocean to support the landing of B-1078 during the Starlink G-6-4 mission. As SpaceX was preparing to launch the Starlink G-6-4 mission, Bob departed Port Canaveral to support any necessary marine operations. This week, we are excited to once again bring you a Cape Canaveral flyover update courtesy of the great Greg Scott and Fariel Mohan. If you haven't already, make sure to give them a follow on Twitter for more great content. At the west end of the Saturn Causeway is where NASA's massive four-bay vehicle assembly building sits. This historic building that has been used for assembly of some of NASA's most famous rockets, including Saturn V's and space shuttles, is now where the SLS vehicles are stacked and prepped for launch. Just outside the building, NASA's Mobile Launcher 1 is still undergoing repairs and refurbishment from the Artemis 1 launch. Once work is completed, this mobile launch tower will be ready to roll back into the vehicle assembly building so the next SLS launch vehicle can be assembled on it. Just to the east of the work on the mobile launcher, work will soon begin on the assembly of a second mobile launcher that will be needed when NASA begins launching the SLS Block 1B and Block 2 configurations. At the opposite end of the Saturn Causeway is NASA's Launch Complex 39B, the launch site for the SLS rockets. Multiple cranes and other heavy equipment show that crews are still working to prepare the pad for the Artemis II launch, which is currently scheduled for November 2024. Just to the south is Historic Launch Complex 39A, one of SpaceX's three active Falcon 9 launch sites and the only one that is currently rated to launch crew. The site is also the future launch site of SpaceX's Starship and Super Heavy. After a rapid start to the development of Starship infrastructure at the site, in recent months it seems that SpaceX has suspended work here while focusing their attention at Starbase. This week marked the third anniversary of the Demo-2 launch, which was SpaceX's first manned Dragon launch. Since that launch, SpaceX has sent another nine crewed missions to space, including three commercial missions. Just a few miles down the coast is SpaceX's Space Launch Complex 40, their second East Coast Falcon 9 launch site. While this pad is not currently configured to launch Dragon variants of the rocket, the crane visible at the site is evidence of the ongoing work to build a crew tower and to add redundancy to SpaceX's Dragon program. Several miles south and west of the launch sites is SpaceX's Roberts Road facility, home of Falcon 9 refurbishment, as well as the future home of a second Starship production facility. At the southern end of Hangar X, two cranes had just finished moving Falcon 9 booster B-1076 off of the transporter and onto stands in preparation for it being rolled out into the building for refurbishment ahead of its next mission. On the other side of the driveway is a specially configured SPMT that SpaceX also uses to move Falcon 9 boosters around the Cape. Across the retention ponds, the western side of the Roberts Road facility is where SpaceX will eventually start building Starships and Super Heavy boosters at the Cape. Similar to what we saw at 39A, however, SpaceX seems to have hit pause on further development of this location following their earlier rapid buildup. The prefabricated modules for the third launch tower still total to just the first seven sections. Unlike previous flyovers, however, there are no man lifts around the area and no sign of any further work. On the ground around the built sections, we can see that the steel for the 8th and 9th modules are still on site, just waiting for work to begin. Just west of the tower sections are some concrete drainage pipes which are staged likely to be used to control the rainwater runoff in the area once the open areas are either covered with buildings, parking lots or roads. Also in this area, we can see some of the beams that will be attached to the chopsticks for catching operations. Continuing on to the west, we find the third set of chopsticks and their carriage as well as the second ship quick disconnect arm. 
While there were still signs of active work on these items during the last flyover, it now appears that progress on these items has stopped as well. The chopsticks and carriage appears to just have had their base structure assembled and welded together before work stopped. The ship quick disconnect arm does have some pipe work and other mechanical systems installed, but work has also been suspended on it with no signs of it resuming anytime soon. Just to the south of this area is the one bright spot of the Starship side of Roberts Road, a seemingly completed Star Factory building. From the exterior, the sharp looking building has all its cladding, all its doors and even the rooftop HVAC units are installed. Unfortunately, there is no way to tell how complete the interior fit out is, but given the state of the progress around the rest of the site, it is likely that work has paused here as well. Just east of the Star Factory is one of the few big changes at Roberts Road since our last look. In the past few months, all of the steel for the first Roberts Road Mega Bay, as well as the two cranes that were on site to build it, were packed up and shipped off to Starbase to build the second Mega Bay there as SpaceX focuses their attention on their Texas facilities. One last interesting thing in this area, however, is part of a Mamoet LR-1200 crane on a trailer near the Mega Bay area. This is the first time we've seen this crane in the area. Is this a new arrival ahead of the fresh round of work, or is this needed elsewhere and just being stored here for the moment? Let us know what you think in the comments. A few miles to the south, just past the KSC Visitor Center, Blue Origin's Cape Production Facilities are home to their new Glen Rocket development. While at first glance the facility's northern campus appears to be complete, a growing assortment of seemingly random hardware, equipment, and even scaffolding may indicate that there is some type of construction or remodeling going on inside the building that caused these items to be displaced. Shipping containers and other equipment on the west side of the tank cleaning and testing facility seem to indicate that work is underway inside there as well. On the southwest corner of the northern campus, however, it seems that the second stage cleaning and testing facility is not only finished, but being used. We were lucky to catch the building's door open and see a new Glenn second stage test article on the stand inside. While it is not yet clear if the second stage has been cleaned or tested yet, its presence inside would seem to indicate that the building is completed and functional. In front of the building, we are also able to see the transporter that was used to move the New Glen second stage to the 2CAT facility. The southern campus of Blue Origin's Cape Production facility is still largely in an active construction site, although much of that construction is shifting to a less obvious phase. The structure and exterior of the warehouse addition now appears complete, but work is likely ongoing inside. Just inside the doorway of the addition's eastern end, we can see the framework still in place from a recently poured section of the concrete floor. Inside the other end of the building, workers are still preparing the base layer in preparation for the concrete floor work to move its way westward. Behind the warehouse, it appears that the structure and exterior of the new Reef Pathfinder building has also largely been completed. Interior fit-outs as well as grading work around the exterior is still ongoing, but overall it seems that good progress is being made on this facility. Next door, progress is less readily apparent on this vertical assembly building. While workers and equipment in the area, as well as a crane laid down next to the building, seem to indicate that work is ongoing, not much seems to have been changed visually since the last flyover. Southeast of Blue Origin's production facility is their new Launch Complex 36, future home of the New Glen launches. While this site's location within restricted airspace makes it much more difficult to see exactly what is happening there, active cranes around the site area are a good indication that they are working to finish preparing the launch pad for New Glen prototype testing in the near future. Over at the shuttle landing facility, an Italian Air Force C-130 was spotted on the runway, possibly having delivered some hardware to the Cape. Next to the runway, steel has started to be installed for what is likely the new Project Comet payload processing facility. At United Launch Alliance's Space Launch Complex 37, their penultimate Delta IV Heavy awaits its new launch date of June 21st. Up the coast at ULA's other launch site, Space Launch Complex 41, all was quiet following the rollback of their first Vulcan rocket last week after its scrub flight readiness firing of its engines. 
At the southern eastern tip of the Cape, Space Launch Complex 46 is still awaiting a return to action while Astra works to develop its Rocket 4. Finally for this week, let's take a quick look at SpaceX's marine assets that were in port during the flyover. Dragon recovery vessel Shannon was tied to the dock while its sister ship Megan was in the Gulf for the return of the Axiom 2 Dragon capsule. Fairing recovery vessel Bob was in port having returned the day before with fairing halves from the Arabsat launch. Falcon 9 booster B-1062 was in progress of being offloaded from the deck of Just Read the Instructions after they had arrived in port just that morning. Since the booster had only just been removed from the deck of the drone ship, the octograbber which is used to secure the rocket to the deck had not yet been returned to its garage. Workers used tag lines attached to the legs of B-1062 to guide the booster to the dockside stand that they used to hold the rocket upright while the legs are folded for transport. Behind the airborne booster, we can see the two fairing halves from the Arabsat mission loaded onto trucks awaiting transport to SpaceX's refurbishment facilities to be prepared for their next launch. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update with a splash of blue origin brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out!